Hello everyone, my name is Chris and in this video we're talking about ABI types. With ARC4 introducing ABI support for Algorand smart contracts, now we can work with a wide variety of data types which makes coding smart contracts a lot more intuitive and easier. If you haven't heard what ARC4 is, head over to the link on the top right to see what it is in more detail. But in short, it's a standard for ABI compliant smart contracts that we recommend people follow to standardize Algorand smart contracts and make front end interactions super simple. With ABI support, now there are three big pillars of data types that are available. Basic types, reference types, and transaction types. Basic types are normal data types that we are all familiar with. I'm talking about integers, booleans, arrays, strings, these kind of data types. Here's a table of all of the basic types that are available for you to play around with. As you can see, now it's much more flexible to write smart contracts with ABI support. Moving on to reference types, which are much more interesting than basic types. When you're calling an algorithm smart contract, you're often providing a foreign array to the application call. Inside the foreign array, you include information about accounts, assets, and other applications that the smart contract needs to know to do its job. To ensure high speed on the algorithm blockchain, smart contracts only have restricted access to the blockchain ledger. But providing these reference types in the foreign array, the smart contract don't have to search the entire ledger, but can only look at the included references when executing its logic. That's why the algorithm blockchain is so fast and so efficient. For example, if I want the smart contract to transfer all of its balance to account A, I need to include account A's account reference type in the foreign array. These are the three reference types that are available, and you can use them by having them as arguments in the contract method. Last but not least, transaction types. If you didn't know already, on the algorithm, you can sign multiple transactions, group them together, and execute them simultaneously using the feature atomic transfers. Now, what's great about this is that within the atomic transfers, an application call has access to previous transactions and can take those transactions as arguments for certain contract methods. So for example, let's say inside an atomic transfer, we have transaction A, which is a payment transaction of one algo to the smart contract and transaction B, which is an opt-in application call that only works if the account has paid contract one algo. By including the payment transaction type in the opt-in contract method as an argument, now the method can check whether the payment has been made by accessing transaction A. Now, one thing to remember is that the AVM still only supports ints and bytes. So in order to work with the wide variety of data types that come with ABI support, there needs to be proper encoding and decoding. This is where the router comes into play. The router automatically handles all encoding and decoding of ABI types, so you don't have to worry about manually making sure all ABI types properly get encoded to either int or bytes. Now let's take a look at a simple charity application that does the following. It accepts funding more or equal to two algos and records the funder. It pays out one algo to an account, and it also has a method that retrieves who the funder is. Now this simple application is going to showcase everything that we talked about today. So let's see what's happening here. First, just like always, we have a router setup named ABI type example. And for simplicity, we only need to find what happens during creation inside a bear call actions. Here in line 17, we have a variable called payment amount, and that's equal to an int value of 1 million. Now I have this here because 1 million micro algos is equal to one algo. And I'm just going to use it later in the contract. Coming down here, we have a pay method registered to the router and it takes in an ABI account type as a receiver argument. Now ABI that account is a reference type. And by including the account reference type as the receiver as an argument, you're passing in this value in the foreign array. Inside of here, we have a sequence and inside the sequence, we have an inner transaction builder. Now, inner transaction is basically a transaction that is sent by the smart contract. We will learn more about inner transactions in a later video, but here all we're doing is by using the inner transaction builder, we're executing a payment transaction and the amount of the transaction is going to be the payment amount that we defined up here, which is 1 million micro algos. And then the receiver is going to be the receiver dot address. Now this receiver value is taken from the argument receiver we passed in. And remember receiver is account reference type and inside the account reference type, 
you can get the value address. To see what receiver.address returns, we're going to set the output as receiver.address. Now this receiver.address will be an address type, so we have the output set as abi.address. abi.address is also a reference type, and by defining what the output is, the router is going to automatically encode and decode the values that you get from the receiver.address and put it as an abi.address type. Now let's come down here and look at the fund method. Here we're passing in an abi.payment transaction type. This is a transaction type, and we're assigning that value to the payment argument. Inside the sequence, we have two assertions, and we're asserting that the receiver of this payment transaction, and you can get that value by doing payment.get.receiver, we're asserting that that receiver is the current application address. And down here, we're asserting that the amount of the payment has to be more or equal to the double the amount of the payment amount variable we defined up here. Now the reason why I'm doubling the payment amount is to cover any minimum balances and transaction costs that will happen in a later action. And finally, we're creating a global state by doing app.global put. The key value is funder in bytes value, and the value is going to be payment.get.sender. So inside the payment transaction, you can get who the sender is. Now notice how whenever we are using the payment argument, we have this get right next to it. Now why do we have to do that? This is because all transaction types have the get method, which returns a transaction object instance that can be used to access fields inside of the transaction. And finally down here, we have the get funder method. It doesn't take in any arguments, but as an output, it's going to return an abi.address type, which is a reference type. And we're returning the value we get from the global state funder. As usual, we have the same code down here that is going to compile the smart contract using the router.compile program, and we're going to dump out the three artifacts into the file system. Now let's run this file in the terminal and get the three artifacts written in the file system. Great, now we can head over to Dataflow deploy the smart contract, and test out the methods we built in the smart contract. Now, when you come to that flow, as always, you want to check that your node setting is connected to Sandbox, so make sure you do that, and make sure to connect to your dev wallet for testing. Now, for this example, let's head over to dev wallets. I'm going to create another wallet that's going to receive the funds dispensed from the smart contract, and I do that by clicking on the Create Wallet button. Now let's head over to ABI Studio and deploy the smart contract. You want to import in the ABI file, click upload file, find the project folder that has the smart contract, go into artifacts folder, and import in the contract.json file. Now head over to create app, click bear, and because this smart contract has one global bytes state that keeps track of who the funder is, I'm going to have one, and for the rest of the states, I'm going to have zero. Now upload your approval, clear, and then click create. Great, now we have our smart contract deployed. Let's first fund this smart contract with the fund method. Now to do that, we need to get the application address. To get the application address, click on the app ID over here. This will take you to the application overview page, and you can see the application account right here. Now copy this value. Go back to ABI Studio, and then fund the smart contract. Now remember, in the smart contract, we have the assert statement that said the payment has to be two algos or more. So let's see what happens if we send one algo. You can see we have a network request error because it failed the assertion. Assert failed. So let's send two algos. And there you go. The method executed successfully. Now let's execute the getFunder method and see if the funder was correctly recorded. If you click execute, we see the value k2w something. If you quickly go back to dev wallet, you can see that the address matches this wallet that we use to deploy and fund. Going back to ABI Studio, now let's pay the account that we created before. 
let's head over to that wallet. I'm going to copy the address of this second wallet that we created over here. Go back to ABI Studio and let's pay this account. Click Execute and you can see that the method executed successfully and we got the value 7DG something. If you go back to that wallet, you can see that it matches the address over here and the balance went up to one algo from zero. Today we learned about three different kinds of ABI types, basic types, reference types, and transaction types, which make writing smart contracts much more flexible. We also learned that the router handles encoding and decoding of ABI types, as the AVM still only supports ints and bytes. That's it for today, now let's move on to the next video.